Welcome back to the Rev and Evan channel. As you can see, we've got a dark horse Mustang, 500 horsepower on the dyno. We're here at Coastal Dyno in Tampa, Florida. This car belongs to Sam Lippicott, owner of the business. It's gonna be the Rev and Evan channel dark horse Mustang project car. It's blue ember, but we need a name, so we're gonna ask you guys to comment. What do you think we should call this thing? Project uh, Blue Ember member, I don't know. You guys come up with something fun. We're also closing in on 50,000 subscribers on the channel. So if you guys could make sure you subscribe and tell your friends about our channel, help us get there. That's a uh, goal we've been trying to reach for a little while and we're almost there. There's a lot of talk on the internet out there about how much these things make at the wheels. We're gonna find out right now. The first thing we're gonna do is dyno this thing then we're gonna get into it. We'll look at the uh, intake system, which is another point of controversy. Why did Ford go with a dual inlet system when they could have just used a single throttle body? We'll answer those questions, but let's not waste any more time. Let's get right to the dyno. That sounded good. Let's go see how much power it made. Testo North America is the world's largest manufacturer of handheld test and measurement instrumentation and software for HVAC, food safety, farmer compliance, and combustion analysis. And you can check them out at testo.com. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really see what everybody's complaining about. This is, you know, Realistically, this is going to be right at 500 to the tire. Yeah, so 438, and that's SAE. Yeah, it's corrected. But like I say, still, that's going to be right around what they're advertising the car at. Uh, so I, you know, I know other people have had different results and things vary, but in my opinion, that's right at what it should make. Yeah, so this is a dark horse handling pack manual. Yep. So nothing out of the ordinary. Nope. With how many miles are on the clock? 26. 26 miles on the odometer. So it's a brand new car. And as you can see the numbers right here in your face, uh, revved it to 73.14. That's just about the red line. Yeah, 73 is it, it dies out right there. So And we are running it in fourth gear too because fifth gear is one to one, but the speed limiter is not gonna cooperate with us trying to run the thing in a one to one gear. Um, it's not gonna let us get through the total RPM range so running it in fourth gear probably it hurts a little bit uh, on the numbers but very very minimal it's not going to be anything that's going to be like all inspiring running it in the, a one-to-one -one gear in my opinion okay and so 438 rear wheel horsepower yep 364 on torque yep which I mean a stick car modern stick car even though it's an IRS car so you're turning uh, you're turning six uh, U-joints mm -hmm. versus a solid axle car where you're really only turning two. Right. So Rob's a little more power. So what? 14 to 16 percent power loss yeah. probably. Yeah, I'd say somewhere in that neighborhood. 14 is, is usually what we go, would go with on a stick car. Um, auto cars obviously are going to be a little bit more uh, power robbing. But like I say, I, you know, just doing the calculations in my head, that's 498-ish right in that area anyway um, right at the crank yeah at the crank so as advertised yeah that's not too bad so i think we're right there and then now it's just a matter of, let's see if we can make more power of course you can't tune these yet but sam yeah. what are we going to do today uh we're going to pull the carbon traps out like uh everybody has been doing and then we may try to uh throw a set of filters in it just to see if it makes any difference um you know with, with two intakes and and two filters and two throttle bodies you know depending on how restrictive those carbon traps are it may or may not make a difference um, I know people have had 
different results on the the carbon traps and I don't know if anybody's actually dynoed one with filters in it yet but I wouldn't expect it to make a big difference but it's not gonna hurt to try it so we'll see how it goes Guys, you ready? This is what we're doing. It's going to take a few minutes, but we're going to throw this thing on. Just kidding. All right, guys, as you can see in the zip tube is a carbon trap. So I wanted to answer a couple questions for you guys. Why did Ford go with a dual inlet versus the older cars that just had the single inlet? Even though, let's say the GT350, it makes 526 horsepower. It does not require that. So as we move on in life, because thanks to our government, they've imposed stricter and stricter and stricter EPA demands on these auto manufacturers. Meaning your car has to produce less emissions, not just out the tailpipes, but even out the intake. So as this thing is ingesting air, um, even though air, you think, flows through this, there's fuel reversion, there are particles in the air, and that carbon trap is designed to catch any type of vapors that may emit out back through the air filter and pollute the air. So Ford now, in order to reach their goal, because that's a restriction, or we think it's gonna be, they have to use a dual inlet with the carbon traps because if they went with a carbon trap in the single inlet of the older style GT or GT350 intake or even the GT500 they would not be able to meet the standards of course the GT500 has the advantage of a supercharger but when you're breathing naturally aspirated you need all the air you can essentially get now there's another catch too why didn't Ford just go with a bigger throttle body and a bigger intake well that presents a problem too because if you think about a throttle body, and we'll show you one on the car, as that blade starts to get bigger, that whether it's one single round or an older style oval, as that increases in size, when you crack the throttle, even a small amount, the bigger throttle body is going to move more air. What that causes is potentially poor drivability at low speed, and it can cause you to have a problem with idle control because you're moving a lot of air at once. So when the car's idling, the throttle blade is moving just a little bit back and forth. The computer's controlling it to maintain idle. It's not shut all the way always. So with two throttle bodies that are smaller, engineers can better control the drivability compared to one giant one. Sometimes that's really hard. Now it's great for wide open throttle power, say on a drag car where you're gonna leave wide open throttle because then it really doesn't matter. But if you're going to be driving the car off idle, you want a very smooth transition. And a big throttle body blade, ask anybody who tunes cars, it can get tricky because they want to open really fast and it moves a lot of air all at once. And if you've ever had that car that like lurches forward, if you have a supercharged car and it's not tuned right especially, that's because that throttle blade opens and it's getting a lot of air all at once and it's really not a smooth transition. So the dual throttle bodies, that's a way to meet emission standards, reach the goal of 500 horsepower, and to have better drivability. All right, so let's take this thing out. We'll show you what it looks like. Then we're gonna put this setup back on the car. We'll dyno it again, and we'll see if it makes a difference. So here's a look at the carbon trap. It's not very wide, but it does block the air and it sits in the zip tube. We pulled it out. And its job is to collect vapors that would otherwise exit out through the air filter and enter the environment. So we pulled the carbon traps out. Uh, we're gonna reinstall these uh, intakes with the factory filters. Do a run and then after that, we will go back to the intake and swap these things out for some higher flowing filters to see if there's any difference at all.
Sam, what'd it do? Yeah, it looks like they picked up, you know, let's say 30 or 40, about 12 horsepower overall. I mean, and honestly, through the curve, it picked up torque and horsepower. So for something that takes about 15 minutes to do, I mean, I don't hate it. Free yeah. horsepower. Yeah, basically. So, you know, we ended up 450 horsepower, uh, so 12 horsepower. Peak torque, we picked up about, I don't know, four or five. So nominal there, that's not really going to make a difference. But, but it's all the know, way through the curve. Yeah, it's all the way through the curve, and it, it is a little more at times. So, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely worth doing. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. Now, if and when the tuning becomes available for these things, do you see an advantage in going, say, another 500 RPM? Oh, yeah. It's going to be just like the GT500, the 2020 GT500 stuff. But getting rid of the rev limiter and being able to bring these things out is going to be a massive improvement. You could probably literally do nothing but raise RPM on these and, and pick up another 20 or 30 horsepower and not touch anything. And have, what have you seen in the tune from what you've been able to data log? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean 20, 25, 6. Somewhere in that neighborhood. I mean, it's kind of, uh, it's actually kind of aggressive for a, for a stock tune, just to be perfectly honest. Like, um, seeing 27 degrees on something straight from the factory is uh, not not something you see often. Let's just put it like that. I was going to ask you, where do you normally go on the, you know, the, the DI Coyotes? I mean, on these things, you would be on pump gas. We would probably start by throwing a couple few more in there. Um, switching these over to E85 probably start in the mid 30s maybe you know 33 34 probably start there and just see where it goes but yeah i don't i don't know what everybody's complaining about because this thing seems to be making exactly what it's supposed to be making and then it's responding to everything that we're doing kind of the way you would think it would so right i know people will ask what fuel we're running it only car only has like 26 maybe 27 miles yeah on now. yeah well it does have 93 in it because whenever i got the car i had them fill it up on 93 so it's got basically a full tank of 93. right but no uh additives or yeah, no, just no, no, pump no, gas no, nothing at all and then like i say it's um not that i think it would really make any difference between 87 and 93 i mean i think that difference would be nominal also so. really yeah, in my opinion, on a factory tune, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Uh, but let's put some filters in it and see what it does. All right, let's do it. So one thing I think Ford got right is you can get to the filters easy access. Just a couple of clips, and this lid literally just pops up and pulls out of the way, and you have access to the filter. So we're going to find out if it's actually worth any horsepower, but it is easy to get to the filter. So this is your stock 2024 Mustang filter. This is obviously out of a dark horse. Fairly certain that this is the same as what they're going to be using in the GTs. I can't imagine they would change it. Uh, we tried to put some filters in the car yesterday. Just had some laying around the shop. Those didn't fit. So ordered the right ones. Uh, got these in this morning. And we're going to smack these in there and see what it does. tube off and then it's just a simple matter of swapping the filters. Alright, filters installed. Let's give it a shot. five horsepower with filters. All right, Sam, what do you think? I mean, that's about what I expected. I mean, five horsepower with the filters is nominal, but better than nothing. Yeah, I mean, picked up a little bit through the mid range, like maybe a couple few. And then up top, peak number, you know, five. 
So there you have it, the first dyno test on the Rev and Evan channel of a Dark Horse Mustang with a six-speed manual. We started with 438, we ended with 455. Sam, I'm pretty impressed with that. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you, I don't understand what all the hate's about. I mean, 438 horsepower stock, I mean, that equates to nearly 500 at the flywheel, so I feel like the car's pretty much right where it should be. I don't feel like the car's any slower than a Gen 3 by any stretch of the imagination. And then just by pulling the carbon traps, we picked up, what, uh, another 10 plus horsepower? And yep. then putting a set of k and filters in it, we picked up another five, which is nominal, but 150 bucks, 17 wheel horsepower. It's probably the cheapest horsepower you're ever gonna pick up on a car, in my opinion, you know, for something that's in a NA anyway. And people have a lot of time, they, they think of cars and horsepower in, in, in the same standard, and it's really not. An NA car versus a, a supercharged car, 17 horsepower is substantial for a, for a naturally aspirated vehicle for practically no money. And, and going back to the, the different generations of these cars, like this car, the, the peak horsepower, it's making at limit. So these are going to be very similar to the 2020 GT500s to where as soon as you can get more RPM through the car, I wouldn't be surprised if they picked up another 20 to 25 wheel horsepower just with allowing us, you know, once we get tuning, allowing us to go up in RPM as far as the, the limit goes. Yeah, and again, 100% stock car, but not for long. Sam, what do you plan on doing to this thing? Uh, we're going to do all the normal stuff. We're going to do exhaust. We're going to probably put a blower on it at some point. We're, we're going to try and get it as far as we can naturally aspirated. Obviously with Evan, that's, uh, that's kind of the gist of what he's wanting to do with the car. So. You know, he's my hero, so uh, <laughs> yeah, right. got to gotta follow his, his lead. So that's that's where we're going to go with the car. We're going to head down to Bradenton Motorsports Park with it. We're going to do some drag runs. We're going to show you what this thing does out on the track. It's not just going to be a dyno queen. Sam is all about racing his cars. If you have seen him with his GT500 at the various events, he's got some good stuff coming up. Where are you going to be uh, in the next couple of weeks? Uh, we'll be at FL2K in Bradenton, and then uh, the biggest race that everybody needs to go to is going to also be in Bradenton this year, and that's going to be Mod Nationals. Yep. Uh, that's the one that everybody should show up to. FL2K is already going to be a madhouse, but come out and support the Mustang stuff at the Mod Nationals this year. It'd be a great help to everybody. There you go. So once again, we're out here at Coastal Dino, Tampa, Florida. Look them up on the internet. We appreciate everybody watching the channel. Thank you for liking. Don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I hope you have a great day.